This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Clint Watson, hitting back against critics of the Davis administration in a press briefing held on Thursday. This coming after the former Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis' remarks in the House of Assembly just days ago regarding the Prime Minister's recent travels. The Prime Minister may have been out of the country for more than two months, which is about 25% or a quarter of the time they have been in office. And at this rate, at this rate, he may spend more than one year of his five-year term away from the Bahamas. According to the press secretary, the prime minister's travels have been necessary for future growth of the Bahamas as he seeks new revenue streams for the country. Mr. Watson notes that as a result of the leader's stance on climate change, he is being sought after by foreign countries. Has taken the bold move of being a leading voice on climate change worldwide. A phenomenal move. The Prime Minister is being sought after because of his stance on climate change, because of his, uh, of his revolutionary policies that he's putting in place in this country to ensure that we mitigate against climate change, but because of the revolutionary uh, legislation that's being passed in the House with, with carbon credits to ensure that we can make sure that we monetize monetize the damage that's being done to us in the, in the Bahamas, even though we are not the emitters. And yes, he's being sought out around the world because people are hearing his message. They're subscribing to the message of climate change. They're subscribing to what he's saying about it. And so he is in high demand. But with that high demand, it comes the opportunity to be able to ensure that we find new streams of revenue, as we're doing with this new legislation, to ensure that we are able to make sure the world is paying for the damage that we are experiencing as a result of climate change. It is a tall undertaking. And that's why he's been so busy around the world. The Prime Minister has not shied away from major issues where the Bahamas has been asked to contribute its, its views and its policies on it. He's able to speak boldly to the world on the world stage. He's able to speak confidently. He's being welcomed around the world by world leaders. And you will see more of that happening this year, all in an effort to advance what is happening here in the Bahamas. When questioned about the cost of the Prime Minister's travels and whether some of the finances are covered by individuals and entities that are seeking him out, Mr. Watson had this to say. So, so in events where the, he's invited to speak and so forth, they always normally cover his costs and so forth. Um, also, what is important to know, a lot of these meetings are international uh, foreign affairs meetings um, between countries and agencies where sometimes you carry your cost to be there, at the table, um, as is a part of governing. And what happens, these are international meetings, for example, the meetings that are coming up, heads of government, uh, some of the Americas, uh, CARICOM, these are organizations the Bahamas is a part of. And a part of being a part of these organizations is when they have their annual biannual or, or you know however often they meet you're expected to be to the table you're expected to report you're expected to speak so these are meetings they would have been attending as well uh, the other meetings where he, he's been invited uh, like I said they cover the cost for that. for example delivering the keynote address recently at a major university in the United States they provide the costing for that um, at the end of the day, we can provide to any media house who's looking for information on costing and so forth. And that all, by the way, will be aligned in budget. You will be able to see costing uh, in there. And it's all a part of, of, of accounting. The press secretary added that the Bahamas is now being asked to speak at certain events because of its membership. And the world wants to hear the voice of the Bahamas on certain matters. The press secretary also defending the government's decision to add value-added tax to breadbasket items. On Thursday, he said the official opposition has been using the addition of VAT on breadbasket items as a political football to distract the public from everything else that the Davis administration is doing. He argued the overall decrease in VAT is generally more impactful than the application of VAT to a few breadbasket items. We've been through this story so many times. And it continues to remain a, a cloudy understanding for so many Bahamians because it's being used as a political football, right? It's being used, oh, to, why are they putting VAT on bread basket items? It's hurting the poor man. And, and, and that's not true. It's not true. And I think I want to start the explanation to this by uh, an analogy given on his talk show, Shivago uh, Lang, which I thought was insightful. It's, it speaks to what we've been saying all along. And that simply is, if you go to the grocery store with $20 and you buy some items that you may need, the majority of those items perhaps will not be breadbasket items. 
if you look at the list of what is bread by, bread by items in, in, our, in our country, it's not what you go to the food store and buy and fill up your trolley with it and leave. It may be a few of those items, but definitely not the majority of those items. Mr. Watson notes that despite claims made by the opposition members, most notably Free National Movement Deputy Leader Shannon Norton Cartwright, the general public response has been positive as people are feeling the savings well beyond the grocery store. So when you look at the fact that you may be paying an, a, a, an increase now on bread box items, which would be a few of the items in your, trail, in your trolley, versus a decrease of 2% in the other items in your trolley, when you get to the cash register, two things probably happens. It nets out to be the same, or you see a slight decrease in savings. And that is what is being explained about the VAT on bread box items. It is not hurting the poor man, as we like to to, 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 to generalize it and saying, because at the end of the day, when, when, when the poor man, as we like to use, looks at what they're spending in a week, whether it be at the food store, the gas station, the wash house, wherever they go and spend money, they're now receiving 2% savings on, across the board than just focusing on this, on this increase that's on bread, bread, bread basket items. And you talk to people and they say, you know what? We are seeing the savings. We are feeling it. So what is being used as a political football is simply not making economic sense. Mr. Watson went on to say that the biggest critics of the change in taxation are those seeking to gain some form of political favor by pushing political rhetoric. With the Atlantic hurricane season just around the corner and reports swirling in the United States media suggesting a very active hurricane season, many people in this part of the world are beginning to question their ability to survive another monster storm. And following what has uh, been now two weeks of constant rains, the Ministry of Works and Utilities has begun to actively engage the public and other stakeholders on their plans to employ new flood remediation methods. A press conference was held on Thursday where Works and Utilities Minister Alfred Sears hosted a team of engineers from across the country along with water and sewage and roadworks officials where they announced the implementation of specially designed storm drains and even the use of dams, in particular flood prone areas. It is time that we take a more comprehensive approach to the issue of flooding. Nassau, New Providence, where we live, is an unplanned city. And as Mr. Moxie correctly stated, the cart has been well ahead of the horse. We are now trying to rectify as we seek to mitigate. Chief Engineer Henry Moxie says other long-term flood remediation solutions being considered include swales, retention ponds, detention ponds, open channel flow ditches, and the more favorable method, 600 feet deep runoff wells. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.